choose the world for themselves. So I can tell you one, for one thing. Those granny puppets, they're puppets. They're not people. And, people, and the public are going to start seeing through them. So good luck. <laughs> Uh, Eva. Hello, my name's Eva. I'm from Fuel Poverty Action. Yeah. We're a group that deals with people, supporting people who are in debt to their energy suppliers, who are stuck on prepayment meters, who are forced into two between heating and eating, and who have been dying, who are dying from cold in their homes. 10,000 people died the year before last as a direct result of fuel poverty. One in five people are in debt to their energy supplier, are in debt to one of the big six. If one in four chooses between heating and eating, and actually it's not even a choice between heating and eating, it's neither for most people. We have people who get in touch with us who say they haven't been able to turn anything on or put the light on or put the bridge on because they can't afford to top up their meter. There are 1,000 people a day having prepayment meters imposed on them, and they pay more than anybody else for their energy in this country. The poorest people are paying a poverty premium. They're paying up to 30% more just to fucking turn the light on than the meters. Because if you're in debt, and well done, you know all about that, you're in 500 pounds debt, the energy supply, they will put you on a prepayment meter and free staff, who we are protesting against on May the 12th, they're the biggest of the big six. They're also the biggest installer of prepayment meters, and they have, under UK law, the right to break into your home. To break into your home and put you on a PPM. Who had a woman who had been raped and she was in the hospital, and when she came out of the hospital, her home had been broken into by British girls. Yay! Yay! Shame on them! Shame on all the big six! And what's more, parent company sent sugar, they're not only responsible for killing people through their killer prices, people can't afford the heating, they're also going to kill us through fermenting climate change by going from broken with quadrilla.
And that is because, yeah, take him away. Uh, <laughs> that is because we have something called the finance sector. <laughs> What is a finance sector? A finance sector, brothers and sisters and comrades in the police, is a death sector. It's like calling a divorce lawyer, a family lawyer, it's newspeak. And the finance sector, allegedly the main growing part of the country. And did you know that two years ago Wonka was the fastest growing corporation in the country? And they've got an award for it from the investment community. Yay! Great! Yeah. That is the rip off sector on the rest of us. The Bank for International Settlements, which in case you didn't know, is the central bank of the central banks. The evil people are the evil people. They say that once your finance sector gets past a certain point, which we passed a long time ago, it shrinks the rest of the economy. So you can't afford to pay the police pensions properly. You have to put in sort of privatised people, and you have to uh, take, a, take away their conditions of security and employment, but at least we're doing our best to sort of make it a little bit more secure for you at the moment, uh, please. OK, there's a lot more points about how the whole system is should be off. Two years ago, I talked to a recently retired investment banker, and he said, I said, hey, you're saying about half of what they're doing is they start to... No, take them away, yeah. You don't understand. Uh, it's about 99% of everything that we do is useless. How much, how much of the investment by the bank is actually used to make something? How much of it is in manufacturing? Of all that stuff, 1.4%. How much is there inflating rents, inflating mortgages? How much of this is just a property bubble? Over 80%, and if you don't believe me, read the Financial Times last year, about 28th of September, Martin Wall. The finance sector is basically a sector for inflating property values, getting the rest of you to pay more and more and more. It's not just one gun, let's fight one gun, but let's be realistic, let's fight the whole of the rest. And if I was going to tell you what else was wrong, you'd be here until it went dark. <laughs> Where's your ginkgo? Where's your ginkgo? Basic income, oh my god, sorry. We're going to talk about basic income. And if everybody had a basic income, then we wouldn't have this poverty bubble that's affecting most of the people in this country right now. Thank you. Uh, for Basic Income UK, what we're campaigning for is an unconditional basic income for everyone. What we need to do now is take back our lives take back our lives from the way money is being used as an instrument of torture around the world. So, that's all I want to say, really. <laughs> so, I mean, against death and against, um, against just the nothingness that's going on right now, it's being used against countries to impoverish them, it's being used against us with the cuts in benefit, it's being used against us with the cuts in, in the NHS and in, all this, in education. And really, uh, it's got to stop. So what we're for... What's the basic income? <laughs> a basic income is a payment to each individual for being alive. All right? This is our share of the economy. We've had too many, too many centuries of, of rip-offs of our resources being stolen, of our land being stolen, of our public, of our public property, our, our, our commons being stolen. So let's go for basic income. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. OK, I've got one more person. I've got Russell Tate Smith from Deepak. Or Deepak is... Um, look, our people's support and services are being stripped away, particularly the disabled people. What we're finding is that services that used to be there, like crisis loans, like community care grants, are deliberately being withdrawn from people. And what's happening is disabled people are three times more likely to use payday lenders than non-disabled people. And that's all part of the plan, because actually debt is an asset. It's an asset for them to build upon, and it's something that they can use to wield over you like a stick. Because in every single case, whether it's your home, whether it's your education, whether it's your children's futures, indebting you and making you answerable to them is all part of the great plan. And disabled people have been out on the streets since the very beginning since this government came into power. And what we're saying is, look, 
We're not here to argue over the niceties of what's wrong and what's wrong. What we want is a stake in our community, a stake that the corporations have as a right and that we have had to fight to every single time because they have never, ever handed anything over willingly. Every single argument has had to be fought, every single inch of ground has had to be won and we've got to make sure that when we come out around Wonga and when we come out around Atos and when we come out around all the other corporations that are in the midst of a freezing frenzy, of a feeding frenzy facilitated by this government and their paymasters, we have to make sure that we're backing each other up, that we're there for each other, that we're reflecting each other's messages, that there's solidarity right across the street because it's only in that that we have our power. Solidarity. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, can we have one more paper? So just very quickly, this whole system is about making people into beggars rather than choosers. Everyone's heard that phrase. Um, so he's, early 70s, there was a report by a group called the Trilateral Commission, which is one of the really big international organisations. It calls itself a think tank, but where the, the most powerful people get together and work out what needs to happen to everybody else. And this report said, this was at a time where there was all sorts of democratic ferment across the Western world, and the report said people have too much democracy. They've got decent jobs, they've got cheap housing, they've got far too much of a platform to actually be agitating for change. So it's really important to understand everything that's been happening since the mid-70s, and especially since Thatcher, as an attempt to make sure that people are beggars rather than choosers. So that people choose to take a loan from Wonga, because otherwise they can't afford to heat or eat. Um, and then they turn, the, the system turns around and says, oh, people are choosing to do this. And they put, a hideous phrase came up in the, in the 80s and 90s called economic democracy. The idea was that it didn't really matter voting anymore or being in political parties or unions or taking political action. How we spend our money, how we choose to act as consumers, that expresses our democratic will, so that's fine. And this is a massive lie that we need to expose. Like I said, when people take money at ridiculous rates of interest, and bear in mind 10% is a really high rate of interest. 10% is stupidly high. If you can't pay it back quickly, you're suddenly in a vast amount of debt. And one of the most dangerous things about Wonga at 5,000% is it makes 25% on a credit card look cheap, or 7 or 10% from the bank look cheap. But we also need to be really clear that it's no coincidence that right now is when all these payday loan companies are flourishing in a crisis made by the very sector, the 1% that has is, that is, uh, created the crisis in the first place and is profiting from what's happening now. This is a vast transfer of wealth from the 99% to the 1%. And a very simple thing, and often it's such a sort of smoke and mirrors exercise that it's easy not to see the simple things, but if you've got overall growth of you know, a couple of percent or, or even shrinkage of the economy and certain sectors like finance are still making 10, 20 percent. That means that vast amounts of wealth is being transferred by definition from the rest of the economy to those people. Mm. So the idea that the 1 percent is creating wealth is, a, is an absolute lie that you can see very clearly looking at the structure of things. And this really is about reigniting democracy, becoming choosers rather than beggars, realising that even though we're struggling to keep our heads above water, as the man for Deepak just so wisely said, our only strength as the little people is in unity. And that's what we've got to remember. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. Very quickly, October, Occupy Democracy, join us, it has to happen. Thank you. <laughs> Can you all hear me? Yay! I've been around long, long time. I lived up the road. I've been married, what, 52 years? Yay! And my wife puts up with me. <laughs> but end of the day, they said today, Tony Ben always bought hope. He bought me lots and lots of hope. I actually follow his footsteps. I'm a member of the Greater London Pensioners. I'm called Dan, Direct Action Network, the Umbrella Man. I've been out there for years fighting, and I tell you what, I'm one of 12, and I don't want to go backwards, I want to go forward. So at the end of the day, be united, you stand, divided, you fall. That's all I've got. Thank you. So things aren't going to get better, they're going to get worse. So all these people that have been struggling
struggling for the last 18 months by going to payday loan companies to cover their rent, to cover their fuel bills, to pay for their children's school uniforms, it's all caught up on them. But what's going to happen over the next year? We're going to see more and more evictions. And these evictions are because people can't afford to live. And it's a basic human right to be able to afford to live. Yeah? We need a roof over our heads and we need fuel and we need food. And that is not a lot to us from a social or supposedly social country. Slowly and slowly, all our human rights are being eroded by a capitalist system where we have to go to food banks. Where we have to go and the embarrassment of going to a loan company to say, I'm really sorry, I can't pay my money this week because actually I've got to put some food on my child's you know, school dinners, whatever it takes. So we're about 18 months behind America and we're going to see more and more evictions. And now we've got to show more and more solidarity for these people that are being evicted because they can't afford to live anymore. So over the summer, Occupy are going to be involved with eviction resistance. They're going to be involved with more democracy. We need to be out there protecting the vulnerable against these people that are hunting us and taking us down when it seems to be these are our basic human rights and they should not be denied to anyone on any level at any time. Okay, yeah, as you said, there's going to be a lot, lots of eviction resistance this year. There's been lots of evictions. I don't know if anyone's been looking at lots of videos that have uh, appeared on YouTube of the police uh, literally smashing down doors, evicting people for many different reasons. Um, but it's up to us to link arms and to actually block the route and actually block the police from coming in and evicting people and throwing them out onto the street. That's what's going to be big this summer. Everyone is going to be linking arms and stopping these guys from coming in and throwing vulnerable people out onto the street. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. But I think everyone deserves a big round of applause for coming. Well done to everyone for coming out today. And I think that um, one guy deserves a big boo. So let's make it as loud as they can so we can hear them. There is actually um, another parade happening tonight at 6 p.m. It's with the students, so it's all about solidarity. Solidarity with the students. It's starting at 6 p.m. at SOAC, which is only about 15, 20 minutes down there. Um, a group of us are going to be walking there at 6 o'clock, just over an hour, um, and they're doing a May Day parade um, around, I believe, the area there. So, once again, thank you very much for coming. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Andrea, and uh, yep, so I'll uh, <laughs> I know. I think my shoulders actually are aching at the bottom now. No worry about it. Uh, okay, so I should see you later. Bye. Oh, sorry. Uh, so when is sorry when is happening again? Binge restaurant. Eighteenth, eighteenth of. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Twelve of May. Okay, guys. Twelve of May. Binge restaurant. Queen Elizabeth II um, uh, Conference Center. See you then. Bye.